Now, one of the features that has become more and more common, uh, certainly in North America, in parts of Europe, and some other places, is church planter assessment. Now, what we're talking about is um, really assessing the gifts and abilities of a person who wants to become a church planter before they actually go and do it. Sometimes what happens is a person is excited. They attended Craig Ott's course on church planting, and they were really excited about church planting. And they say, I'm just going to go do this. But they really don't have the gifts. They have the enthusiasm, but not really the gifts and the talents and so on or the experience. And that is usually a painful thing because very often they fail. And so what many organizations are doing, church denominations, they say, we want to have a process of assessing a person, evaluating what their gifts and abilities are before we send them to plant a church. Now, if you're just talking about a very grassroots house church type movement, this is probably not necessary. But if you've got somebody who's going to be going and planting a, a more traditional type of church, um, then this has proven to be a very, very helpful way to reduce the failure rate. Um, in fact, one of the studies was done by uh, Ed Stetzer, who's sort of a church planning expert in the United States. He did a study of churches in the United States, and this particular graphic shows how fast the church grew based on whether the church planter had received assessment or not. And you can see from this that essentially if the church planter had been assessed, this was the, the church maybe had a little over 40 members the first year. Uh, they move up to a little over 50 in the second year. And they're probably up around 70 in the third year. They're getting close to 80 by the fourth year. Now, if that church planter had not been assessed, you can see that the growth is much slower. And by the fourth year, they're, they're barely 60. Um, now, that's just one way of looking at how assessing a person's gifts and making sure they're a good match uh, has positive benefits. In the Evangelical Free Church in the United States, we've been, it's been said that we've reduced the failure rate of new ch church plants from maybe around half. So if we say five years after that new launch, five years later, maybe only half of those churches were still thriving. And we've been able to cut that way down. So the success rate is more like around 80% of the new churches are actually thriving, surviving, and doing well. Because we are just discerning how the Holy Spirit has gifted people. Now, usually the assessment, there's different ways to actually conduct church planner assessment. Some organizations will bring together several potential church planners for several days. And they'll spend several days together and they'll do exercises and have them do simulation games and they'll look at their preaching and their relational skills and really look at them carefully. And then they will identify strengths and weaknesses. Other groups do it a little differently where there's more uh, written material, recommendations, personality tests, and then you come together with a committee for just a half a day. And then there's intensive interviewing, the spouse comes along, um, and at the end of a half a day, then there's an assessment made. And usually the assessment is not succeed, this person can be a planner, or no, this person can't be a planner. But usually it comes out something like this. We see your strengths are here and here and here. But we also see you have a weakness here. And we don't recommend that you start planning a church until you've developed these areas where you're weak. Um, we also say in church planner assessment, past behavior is the best predictor of future performance. In other words, somebody may come and say, well, I want to be a church planter. I just have a passion for lost people and, and want to be a church planter. Well, one of the questions would say, well, tell me about somebody who you've recently led to Christ. I said, well, I haven't led anybody to Christ in, in a long, long time. Okay, well, tell me about somebody you've shared your faith with. Maybe they didn't decide to become a Christian, but you shared your faith. Can you tell me recently somebody you've shared your faith with? Oh, well, I, I haven't talked to anybody about Jesus for a long time. Well, why do you think that person 
is suddenly going to start doing that if they haven't been doing it. So that is a warning sign. Or a person comes and says, I want to start a new church. One of the things we say, well, tell me about something you've started in the past. Have you ever started a club? Have you ever started a business? Have you ever started a Bible study group all on your own? Something that you felt God was leading you to do, and you went and you started something. Well, if a person could say, yes, I started a Bible study group, or there was a new ministry in our church that I helped launch, and I was a leader of it, then you say, well, this person, he's, he's done something like that before. If they say, no, I've never done that. You say, well, why do you think now suddenly you're going to be able to do one of the hardest things in the world? Church planning's hard. So we look for a person, and all we're really saying is, if God has gifted you a certain way, that's going to be showing. It's going to be evident in your life and in, in your, your ministry up until now. Now, maybe you've never done anything as grand as planning a church, but there will be signs that you have those gifts and those passions and those skills. And if you don't have them or you've never shown them, then that's a warning where we say, you know what? You need to work on that because that's an ability you really need to have and you need to demonstrate that. So those are the kinds of things that tend to happen in church planter assessment. And it's proven really helpful, as I say, to increase the success rate of new churches that are planted. Now, sub-movements are very small, and they say, hey, you know, we just don't have very many people, and we're glad when anybody's willing to go do it. And uh, I understand that. Uh, but at the same time, we do want to be wise and discerning that we don't put people in a situation where they're very likely to fail but where we have good reason to believe that God has gifted a person for that certain type of ministry. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.